Oh man, what's up, peoples? Man, what's this place, man? How you guys doing? Pray in Jesus' name, the internet connection stay strong. What's up, peoples? Time to say goodbye. Parnamino. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. All right, sorry about that. Come, come. <clears throat> Amanda Zori. Kene. Oh, Gori. Oh. All right. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Brian, if you can hear me in the text. You can hear me in the text, Brian? Brian, man, what it, would it be like, Brian? <clears throat> yeah, my voice needs to warm up. <clears throat> What's up, Angel Angel? Yeah. Twice Angel. Brian, answer, Aaron Anthony, answer in the comment section, bro, not on Skype. JK means just kidding. All right. What's happening, everybody? What's up, peoples? Angel, you're saying the other days I didn't look handsome? I appreciate the compliment that I look handsome today, but you're saying the other days I wasn't as handsome? Time to, by the way, <clears throat> two things. The reason why I started later, Lord willing, I want to start my live streams at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. Oh, here we go. We have a Muslim here pretending to be an atheist. The reason why I didn't start earlier. Hey, Scott, good to see you, brother. Scott, we need to talk. I will try to reach out to you this week. Let me explain to you what happened. I want to start, if God wills, if the Lord allows me to, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't convert to Islam. Are you on my channel, bro? Hold on, hold on. Don't convert to Islam. Are you here? I'm shocked. You're one of the guys we unblock? Okay. Don't convert to Islam. I'm going to be charitable and kind to you. I'm going to let you stay in my channel because I saw what you just did recently. You took some information from my divorce documents and tried to slander me. That's okay, friend. I know you're upset with me because I was trying to reach out to you and telling you you need to be a Trinitarian. But I want to be gracious to you, <clears throat> okay? Don't convert to Islam is here. So let's be gracious. Let's be kind to him. Yeah. He used to be a Muslim for 16 years. He left Islam, and he was on a journey about Christianity. He's embraced the form of Christianity that's what we'd call, no, uh, don't convert to Islam. Friend, put it in context. See, I don't want to start a debate with you. You know that you embrace the form of Christianity that's oneness. It's not Trinitarian. And because of you, I do thank you, though. I ended up debating Pastor Stephen Ritchie. Okay? I didn't attack you for getting baptized. If you got baptized as a Trinitarian, I'd be worshiping Jesus with you. But for the record, friend, let's let's be upfront and let's be honest. Yeah, guys, can you see the uh, chat? <clears throat> Is the chat working? Because now it says he can't see it. Yeah. You did not become a Trinitarian. And when I tried to ask you, why don't you come out and tell people you're a oneness, you didn't want to do that. You did not want to tell people you're a oneness. You got offended and you got salty and upset that I called you out on that because you know Trinitarianism and oneness, the twain shall never meet. You know this. So why would you get upset? Right? I have nothing personal but when it comes to the Godhead, I cannot compromise. And so you got upset, and you've been on a vendetta to try to discredit me. At one time you thought, because don't convert to Islam, baptizing in Jesus' name only. What is that, friend? And you know Stephen Ritchie came to your defense, and I ended up having two debates with him. Did you watch those debates? And because of that, thanks. And again, I'm saying this from my heart. I'm thanking you. I ended up debating Roger Perkins, and then do, he didn't do so well. It didn't bode too well for him, right? So thank you. You know why I want to thank you? Yeah, okay. So, okay. Are you saying you're a Trinitarian? We'll embrace you. We'll praise Jesus, and I'll, and I'll be supporting your ministry. Are you a Trinitarian? I will go public and say, support this brother. He's a Trinitarian. He loves the triune God. I'll hold your hand, and I will work with you, and I'll have people interview you. How about that? Are you a Trinitarian then? See, notice, guys, you see what he just said? I'm not saying that. 
So now who's playing games, folks? Do you got who's playing games? You said, see, I'm not saying that. I do believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, now do you guys blame me? Be honest with me, my Trinitarian brothers. Do you guys blame me? Yes, Jesus was a Trinitarian. Why? Because he knew that he's the member of the Godhead and he's not the Father, he's not the Holy Spirit. So now you're sounding like a Muslim. So, guys, do you blame me for exposing him? Do you blame me for exposing him? Do you see why he got upset at me? And now all he can do is go into divorce court files where my ex-wife's lawyer is trying to make me look bad to slander me. And he thinks I'm going to lose sleep. He thinks by doing that he's hurting me and my reputation. Because he can't refute me when it comes to the Trinity. I am taking it easy on him. If I was being a jerk, I would have blocked him. I'm not blocking him. But guys, this is now recorded. The comment section are archived. Here you have, don't convert to Islam. He just told you he's not a Trinitarian. He does not worship your God. Exactly, Razzles. He went and took what Muslims found, the court dockets. And if anyone knows about divorce, and I hope you don't, you have two lawyers, your lawyer and your spouse's lawyer, and both sides try to make the other person look as bad as possible. Okay? What did this guy do? He took the information that Muslims took, snippets, snippets from the accusations of her lawyer, made a video to claim that I'm making about, what, 100000 a year? He did, this is not the only time he did this. Earlier, he found some guy named Sam Shimon. Talk, talk about desperate. Guys, there's some Assyrian named Sam Shimon in Chicago as a restaurant. He contacts me and says, how's your restaurant business doing? I'm like, what are you talking about? He sends me a link. Some Assyrian guy named Sam Shimon has a restaurant in Chicago, and he thought it was me. Talk about being desperate to try to discredit me. Look, you see what he's trying to do? Okay, so don't convert to Islam. Do you want to call me on Skype so we can have a discussion about Mark 12? You know I've discussed Mark 12. You know I've written on Mark 12. Are you willing to call me on Spike so you can debate me on Mark 12? Are you willing? No, guys, it's okay. I want him to come because now you have it recorded. Guys, please, it's now recorded. Glory to the triune God, the true God, not his false God. It's recorded on Skype. We got his comments. They're going to appear. Don't block him. If you block him, his comments won't show up. You just heard it from the horse's mouth. He's an anti-Trinitarian. Did you hear what he just said? I didn't say I'm a Trinitarian. And was Jesus a Trinitarian? So now can I ask you, brother, something? Can I ask you something? As Trinitarians who worship the Trinity, can you support a man who's an anti-Trinitarian and believes a different God that he claims is the God of the Bible? Can you support him? Can you support him? No, you're lying. Don't convert to Islam. Before God, you're lying. I never rejected your debate. I'm begging you debate me. Why are you lying? Publish the emails. Publish the emails. I'm going to call you out. You're a liar. Because if you, I debated Pastor Stephen Ritchie, a oneness, because you wouldn't debate. And he got decimated by the triune God. And because of you, I now debated another oneness heretic, Roger Perkins, and he got decimated. Dec decimated. Post them to see where I back down. Guys, we're going to call out his bluff. And I promise you he's lying through your teeth. Whatever he's going to quote. And I'm calling you out. I want to debate you. Okay, said I back down. I want to debate you. Will you accept my challenge? In fact, can you debate me now? Impromptu. I want you to debate me on your false God. Will you do it? No, he's here, Christopher. He's right there. Do you want to do it now or do you want me to set it up? So guys, for the record, you're hearing me, right? I'm begging this man, debate me on your God. Let's have a biblical debate. Is the triune God real or is your God real? And I promise you, I'll decimate your lies and blasphemies against the true God. Will you do it? Will you do it? Let's see if you're going to do it. I'm calling out your bluff. You know why he got upset? For the record, folks. You know why he got upset? He made, look, let me tell you the dishonesty on this person. This is why, guys, if you're Trinitarians, if you are Trinitarians and you love the triune God, you better not support his ministry. Okay? Can I, can I tell you why? 
Let me tell you how all this started. Let me take a moment. This was a godsend. The man who's trying to slander me by using Muslims to attack me. Let me tell you what happened. I noticed he put a video of his baptism. And I noticed they baptized him in the name of Jesus and started speaking in tongues. Then the next day, you know what he did? Don't convert to Islam. Okay, I have my chance. Why don't you give me another chance? I'm calling your bluff. Look at the lies. Okay, I back down, which is a lie from hell. I'll never back down from anti-Trinitarians. You're lying, which shows the spirit that possesses you. Okay, I want to debate you. I want to debate you. Okay, now, do you know why he got upset? He did a video. He did a video where he got baptized in a tub in the name of Jesus, spoke in tongues. And I knew immediately he's a oneness. And then the very next day after his baptism, he did another video. Guys, he did another video where he's now appealing, and he doesn't say he's not a Trinitarian because he knows most of the people, most of the, of the sheep that support him are Trinitarians. He didn't want to say he's not a Trinitarian because he was asking for support that Christians would support him to go to Bible college. What was it? Don't convert to Islam. 40,000? So do you see the dishonesty, how satanic and demonic this guy is? He puts his baptism video, and the next day he asks for Christians to support him to go to Bible college, which costs about 40,000. And he's attacking me, supposedly for making 100,000, because he's taking snippets out of my divorce court proceedings, and he doesn't know the context. Okay. So I called him out. I go, wait, you're not a Trinitarian. Can you tell the Trinitarians here you're a oneness? He refused to admit he's not a Trinitarian. And when people asked him on Twitter, on his comment section, as a coward, as a son of Satan, he would not say that he's not a Trinitarian until I called him out. Do you see now why he hates me? Do you see now why he hates me? And he's on a vendetta to slander my character. Instead of refuting me on scripture, all he can do is slander my character. And he thinks that he's actually making himself look good in the process. So thank the Lord. This is now recorded. Guys, don't convert to Islam. Just came on my YouTube channel in front of everyone. He's an anti-Trinitarian. He doesn't worship the Trinity. He worships a false God, a doctrine of demons, and he won't debate me. I'm calling you out. Let's debate. Will you debate me? Will you debate me? Thank you, Just Wretch, because I, uh, I'm an apostate because you say so. Gee, Just the Wretch. Oh, Queen of Heaven, you, you, th you think I'm going to lose sleep? Why don't you debate me and see what I'll do to you? Don't worry, guys. Don't let them distract you. Focus. Okay, so now you guys know why you need to call this guy out. You guys with YouTube channels, with social media, you need to make it public. Don't convert to Islam is not a Christian. He's a heretic preaching a false god, a doctrine of Satan, and he wants to still get Trinitarians to support him. And when a Trinitarian calls him out for worshiping a false god, he goes and slanders them. Okay, so if you love the triune God, this is where you're going to know you love the triune God. If you love the triune God, you cannot support this man. You need to call him out. And this is where I get sick of Christians. Let me tell you where I get upset with you guys. Let me sit, tell you, as long as someone bashes Islam, you're quick to love him and run to him and subscribe to him and support him and give him a platform. Just the wretch, Matt Slick is my brother in Christ. I would be more than happy to have a debate with him because we can do it respectfully, unlike you, heretic. So now zip it before I zip you. Let me focus here. So your hatred of Islam is greater than your love for the triune God. I don't care. I don't care if this man bashes Islam. He is misleading people into worshiping a false God. So guys, if you believe the triune God is real, and this man gets a Muslim to worship his God. Is that person saved? Knowingly rejecting the Trinity, knowingly attacking the Trinity, knowingly saying the Trinity is a false God. So why are you going to support this man? 
So when are we as Trinitarians going to be zealous for the honor of God and be in love with the triune God and stand up for the glory of the triune God so that even if someone bashes Islam but invites someone to a false god, we then expose them and shame them and <clears throat> put them in their place too because they're no better than Muslims. It's called don't convert to Islam, Sai Christian. Don't convert. Don't convert, number two, to Islam. Okay? So I'm glad he showed up. He's been show, And you know what, guys? He's been stalking me. He's been going on YouTube channels that feature me. And he puts a, co a comment section. Here, if you want scholar refutations of Islam, come to my channel. Because he's baiting people to come to his channel so they can see the video where he slanders me. Do you believe that, Sai Christian? You see what this guy did, don't convert Islam? He took statements out of my court documents divorce where the lawyer trying to make me look bad and he did a video trying to slander me. Because I had mutkalbele, brun satana. And he thought he's going to get, somehow he's hurting me. Anyway. Yeah, he did that. He did it. Yeah. All right. Now, guys, let's, let's regroup. I don't mean to insult dogs. I'm sorry. Yeah. But Sparky Master, he quotes my ex's lawyers who went for the juggler to make me look evil, that I'm making tons of money. And my ex knows I don't make tons of money in order to destroy me in front of the judge. And this guy took those snippets and the Muslims provided him that information. And he used that to slander me. Talk about this guy's hatred for me. Wow. And Sai Christian can tell you, he's here. Yeah, that was the one. Don't converse. He took their information and made a video. Sai Christian, before God as our witness, the judge in Illinois, is she not the most wicked, corrupt, crooked, evil judge, the devil in the flesh, and destroys men? And their website trying to expose her? Sai Christian will tell you. Right? Anyway, guys, I'm glad he came. Her name is Judge Jean Marie Reynolds. Their websites, St. Dennis, look for Judge Jean Marie Reynolds, Skokie, Illinois. Websites begging <clears throat> Illinois to remove her and to investigate her for her corruption. Okay. And well, folks, I'm not upset he did that. Honestly, here, the Lord is bearing witness. I'm not upset he did that. I just was disgusted. How low can you be, you wicked son of Satan? Because you hate the Trinity, and I'm zealous for the glory of Trinity, the Trinity. Because I'm zealous to stand up for the glory of the Trinity and expose you as an anti-Trinitarian son of Satan. So you're gonna stoop that low to try to slander my character as if I'm making tons of money and I'm a millionaire and I'm hiding it. Wow, man. Razzle, I don't care anyway, Aziza. Who cares, Razzle? But you know that's a sign, a good sign, Razzle. You know what's a sign of? I must be doing something good for Satan to come after me with such viciousness. Glory to the triune God. Praise the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. May the Father, Son, Holy Spirit seal me by the Spirit, cover me by the blood of Jesus and my daughters. And if this is bring him glory, May Satan attack me more viciously as long as the triune God who lives preserves me to stay in love with him and be in love with him and live for him and die for him. He is worthy, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. That tells you I must be doing something right. Because I wouldn't be having these issues. And folks, you don't even know the issues I'm going through privately. With a corrupt, wicked, filthy, satanic legal system. That I need your prayers that God protect me. Because this corrupt legal system can unjustly throw me in jail. And hinder my ministry. So I need you to pray against that. That's okay, Ayo. So, and guys, honestly, the Lord bear witness. I don't hate this guy. I don't hate him, right? I don't hate him. I want him to come and worship the triune God. I want this man to love the Trinity. I don't want him to be lost. Honestly, the Lord is listening if I'm lying. Guys, the Lord is listening. 
I don't hate you, don't convert to Islam. It's nothing personal. I pray in Jesus' name you come to worship the true God, the triune God, and be my brother. So together we can take down Islam and glorify the triune God. It's not personal between you and me. It's about my God. And you're promoting a false God. Oneness is a doctrine of Satan. The God of oneness theology is a false God. It's not the God of the Bible. And as long as God gives me health and, and breath, and holiness, I will not allow heretics like you pervert the Bible to preach a God that was erected by Satan. It will not happen as long as I have breath in my lungs, as long as Jesus is pleased to use me. I will oppose all these false satanic doctrines that attack the true God with my dying breath by the power of the triune God. Okay? So it's nothing personal, friend. No, I didn't block him. Don't block him. Don't block him. Yes, I a Christian. Muslims went into our divorce, my divorce doc, doc, right? Took snippets out to make me look bad, and this guy went and advertised it. You see his hatred of the Trinity? No, he's not debating. He, he, he says, I back down from debating him. Guys, I just called his bluff. You heard it right here. I'm begging you, debate me. Debate me. I'm begging you, please. Now, with that said, we love you, Father. Son of God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. The trying God, you are God and you alone. And the Bible is a book revealing the triune God. It is a Trinitarian book, the revelation of the true God. Father, fill my lungs and my chest and throat with the breath of life so I can have the health I need. And anoint the sound of my voice to use my voice to glorify you, your son and your spirit. The one true triune God. You alone are God. Father, Son, and Spirit. And give me the holiness and the purity and the boldness to glorify you. Even if it means I die for you, Father. If I die for you, Lord Jesus, you are worthy. Holy Spirit, give me power to die for the Father, Son, and for your glory. And bless everyone here. Please, Holy Spirit, fill them. Anoint them. Give us wisdom and knowledge, understanding into the word to have no doubt that this book reveals that the God of this Bible, who is the true God, is triune, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And give us the power, Holy Spirit, to be in love with the triune God, to live for the triune God, and to die for the triune God so we can live in the presence of the triune God forever and ever and to never compromise and never sin and shame you. Please, my God. We love you, Father. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Bless this session. Bless everyone here. Anoint them to understand. And help me not to be a distraction to my neighbors, but to bless them. Please not to be a nuisance to them, but to be light to them. And Father, save me from the children of Satan. Save me from the corrupt legal system. Give me favor for your glory to continue to do this work until I die or until Jesus returns. And bless our loved ones. Bless my daughters. Preserve them in your love and bring them to me, Father. Lord Jesus, bring them to me. Holy Spirit, bring them to me. And bless my brothers and sisters. Bless this session mightily. And enable me to recall the scriptures and interpret them perfectly for your glory. The glory of the Father, the glory of the Son, the glory of the Holy Spirit. The one true eternal triune God. We love you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God of the Father, the Spirit. Okay. Now, that said, let me explain to you why I'm, I'm late, later than normal. Right? I'm trying to stay at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is a perfect time for people in Europe and in the UK uh, and the United States. The reason why I couldn't do so today is because I can't say this too loud. My neighbor is a young man. Pray I can be an influence to him and be Jesus to him. He blasts his music. Gemini writer, if you don't like the fact I'm angry, why are you here? Why don't you get out of here? He blasts the music so loud, and he does it for about two hours a day. So I had to wait for him to finish, right? So he finally finished. Then when I wanted to start, Al Fadi went live with Anthony Rogers. So I wanted them to finish. So now I'm here. So sorry for being later uh, than normal. And tomorrow, God willing, is Alan Ruhul here? Is Alan Ruhul here? Johannes, are you starting again, bro? 
telling me what to do? Gemini, don't mock Jesus and use Jesus' name in vain. You're going to get blocked. And Gemini, you know you're tough behind the screen because you wouldn't say this to my face. I promise you. Be a tough guy behind the screen like a coward. Okay, guys, Alan Ruhul has a YouTube channel. I want you to like his YouTube channel, subscribe. He's a Catholic apologist, and I consider my brother in Christ. I know Truth Defender is going to stone me for that, but it's okay, Truth Defender. You're a Moriite. Tomorrow, God willing, I'll be doing an interview with him, a live interview with him on his YouTube channel. Is it going to be live or pre-recorded? Live or pre-recorded? Okay, pre-recorded. Okay, then you guys can't watch it. But do like, uh, subscribe to his YouTube channel because the first interview he did was with me. He thought about which leading Protestant heretic he could interview, and he chose me. So he found the leading Protestant heretic to interview, and I was his first interview. So like his YouTube channel, he's also got a blog, right? He's very intelligent. He poses some challenging questions for Protestants to consider. And you'll find the interview I did with him on his channel. And I'm going to do another interview. It's recorded, and then he'll download it to his YouTube channel. So, okay. So with that said, are we ready? By the way, Andy, well, guys, when I was speaking loud, let me be honest with you. Okay, when I was speaking loud, I wasn't angry. The Lord knows my heart if I'm lying. See, people think when I get loud, I'm angry. No, it's sometimes I don't want to say I'm passionate, but I do get passionate about the truth of God. I'm not one of those guys, those intellectuals that say, yes, the preponderance of the evidence leads to the overwhelming conclusion to the possibility that Christ was raised from the dead. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not one of those. I couldn't make it in a university setting. By nature, I'm Middle Eastern and I'm Assyrian, Aturaya, right? Assyrians, even when they're happy, they're loud. Here, you can ask the Assyrians here. We got Razel, who's Chaldean, but he's actually Assyrian, but he's a Assyrian hater because he wants to call himself Chaldean when he's Assyrian. It's okay, don't hate. Okay, Razel is here. Galgemish is here. Sergun is here. Amanda, we're all Assyrians. And Sai Christian will tell you. He'll tell you. A, a normal conversation. I'm not lying. Guys, tell me if I'm lying. You come to an Assyrian home, a normal conversation will be screaming, Die! Yatkmai bananach! Imen aplach! Okay, so I'm screaming. You think I'm yelling at my mom. But you know what I just said? Mom, you know how much I love you? I'll die for you. But you don't know that I'm actually passionate in telling my mother how much I love her. You think we're angry. See, choose Jesus. He's right here. So this is how we are. We're loud by nature, dude. We can't help it. Even our women are bold. Our women? What, Zena? Well, you know what? Interestingly, we do have a Zena here. She's here. Zena, Princess Warrior. She's the real Princess Warrior, not that fake actress. Our women would put Muslim men to shame in their passion. There are more warriors than Muslim men. And Masihu. Anna Growing is here, so I have to be careful. I have to be careful. I can't do the uh, Islamic version. Because of you, Anna, so I don't be a stumbling block to you. Okay. I'm going to do the paparazzi version of Al Masih Akbar. Al Masih. No matter what. Uh, here we go. Ryan Reynolds, are you back again? No, Ryan, I'm actually, I'm not like your prophet, a filthy dog. Ryan Reynolds, I know you're ashamed of your dog, Muhammad, which is why you came under an alias, pretending to be something you're not. Your prophet whored women like your mother, prostituted women like your mother, raped women like your mother, and slept with a nine-year-old. And you're still not ashamed of that filthy pervert? Right? Ryan Reynolds came in here earlier pretending to not to be a Muslim. Hey, brother, did you see that five-part, four-part series by those Muslim clowns? Hamza Mayat will never debate me. And Ijaz Ahmed will never debate me because they're cowards like their prophet. They're only men when they have knives and guns to behead people and rape their women. You see that? Some good questions against the crucifixion. And it turned out he's a wicked, stone-kissing, pagan Mohammedan. Right? Anyway, guys, are we ready? 
Admins, mods, you have full permission to block anyone at your discretion that's a distraction. Okay? Because I'm going to focus on glorifying Jesus Christ. Let's begin. May the Lord Jesus be glorified. And again, I apologize. It's a little later than normal. So mods, block at your own discretion. But immediately block someone who blasphemes the triune God. Blasphemes the triune God. Okay. Or justifies abortion. I will not tolerate someone justifying abortion. That is murder. And I promise you, the Western countries will suffer the wrath of God for murdering countless unborn children. They will suffer God's judgment, shedding of the innocent blood, right? And if you're one of those that justify it, leave my channel immediately. Immediately. I don't want you here. So those. Now, mods, you have permission to block a person for any other reason. No, Lisa, you'll never be timed out. Lisa, you're a precious sister in Christ. We wouldn't time you out. Right now, let's begin in Jesus' name. With that said, let's continue where we left off. Now, if you have listened to the previous talks, then you saw the case I made from Mark, right? You saw that we went from went from Mark 1, Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 2. We looked at Mark, cha Mark chapter 6, and we saw from Mark that Mark portrays, and if you... Didn't listen to the previous sessions? Please, let me encourage you, for the glory of Christ, go back and listen to the previous sessions and re-listen to them and study the articles that I provided, which are in the description box, until this information becomes second nature and you can use it for the glory of Christ. Please. See? He just exposed himself, Ryan Reynolds. Earlier, brother, can you help me with the crucifixion? Can you help me with the crucifixion? All right. Ryan, you're more than welcome to stay and learn, but don't distract, okay, friend? Just pay attention and learn. We demonstrated that Mark portrays Jesus. Guys, pay attention. Mark port portrays Jesus as Jehovah God of Israel. If you want to say Yahweh, that's okay. I don't. I have no, no problem with Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahovah, Jehovah, however you want to say the divine name. Jehovah God of Israel who became flesh, and yet he's the son of the Father and the companion of the Holy Spirit. I already demonstrated and prove that, okay? Demonstrate it and prove that, right? What did I demonstrate and prove? That from chapter one of Mark, and if you read all the way through, Mark depicts Jesus as the God of Israel Almighty in the flesh, son of the Father, companion of the Spirit, so he's Trinitarian. I already demonstrated that. What I want to do is I want to look at a couple of passages and questions that was asked of me. For example, our brother, Alan Ruhul, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it's Ruhul, right? Can you guys come up with more complicated names? Like William of Reason and Theology, William Albrecht, A-L-B-R-E-C-H-T. For the record, folks, I have a lisp. I have a lisp. Certain words make my lisp much more prominent, and I start salivating. You'll start seeing me spitting because I have a lisp. I've been trying to cover the lisp. It doesn't work. This is why when I'm in a live audience, I tell the people sitting in the front row, get ready to be showered in holy saliva. Why? Because I'm going to shower you with saliva. But remember, if you're a believer, every part of you is sanctified, even your saliva. So it is a blessing if I shower you with my saliva. It is a blessing. Every part of you is sanctified. Okay. So certain, certain words make my list more prominent. So like Al uh, William Albrecht. <laughs> All right. Okay. So with that said, let's go to a passage that Alan Ruhl brought up to show you how to use it to prove that Jesus is God in the flesh, but also answer the objection that is used by anti-Trinitarians against our use of this passage. Let's go to Mark 14, 61 to 62. See, here we go, Acts 2.38. Why do I attract anti-Trinitarians? He just called the Trinity. Remember, guys, if they mock the Trinity or the Word of God, get him out of here. Okay. Mark 14, 61, 62. Now, guys, pay attention. Don't let Satan distract you. Pay attention. Don't let Satan distract you. 
Candence, I like your spirit. You're fiery. There you go. I promoted you, Candence. Candence, I like your spirit. You're fiery. Read Mark 14, 61 to 62. But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? Jesus said, I am. Now pay attention. Jesus says, I am the Christ, the son of the blessed. But now notice what he says about himself. And you will see the son of man, referring to himself, son of man, sitting at the right hand of the power. So I'll be seated at the right hand of God, power, and coming with the clouds of heaven. Okay, folks, pay attention. Jesus says, I am the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One, and I will be seated at the right hand of power, meaning the Father, and I am the Son of Man that comes in the clouds of heaven. I am the Son of Man that comes in the clouds of heaven. Now, how does this prove that Jesus is God in the flesh from the Gospel of Mark? Let's unpack this. So I hope I'm a blessing to you. I know many of you already know these facts, but it doesn't hurt to re-hear them again and re-re-hear them again until it becomes second nature. So most of you already know this. But still, we need to hear something over and over again until we're so grounded in them, it becomes second nature. So let's go to Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Jesus was referring to the prophecy of Daniel 7. Watch here. The Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. Let's unpack who Jesus claimed to be. Okay, Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Read with me. I was watching in the night visions. The prophet Daniel had a vision at night. And behold, one like the Son of Man. Here's who Jesus claimed to be. One like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. See, Jesus said, I am him. I am the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days. Notice there's two there. And they, pay attention, there's two. And they brought him near before him. So they brought the Son of Man before the Ancient of Days. They brought the Son of Man before the Ancient of Days. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. So the Son of Man was given dominion. Pay attention to that. He was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Remember this word, serve him. Okay. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Folks, understand? Who our Lord claimed to be. And you guys already know this. Alan, Ariel, all you seasoned apologists, you know this. But for the benefit of others, I hope you don't mind if I repeat this again. Right? Okay. Jesus said, I'm that son of man that Daniel saw. What son of man? The son of man that he saw coming in the clouds of heaven, coming before the ancient of days. So notice Daniel, an Israelite prophet, saw two divine persons. The ancient of days... That's God the Father and the Son of Man, whom Jesus said is me, that he saw. He saw me in a vision, riding the clouds to heaven, approached the Ancient of Days, the Father, to receive a kingdom from the Father. So now notice the Son of Man approaches the Ancient of Days. That's two distinct divine purpose of persons. And Daniel saw that. So about 600 years before the birth of Christ, Daniel was given an amazing revelation from the Holy Spirit to see two divine persons in glory. The Ancient of Days, God the Father, Son of Man, riding the clouds, coming to the Father, the Ancient of Days, receiving a kingdom from the Father to sit enthroned with him, ruling as an eternal king over an eternal kingdom that cannot be destroyed, whom all nations must serve. Ryan Reynolds, why are you lying, dude? Why are you starting? I just challenged a guy to debate me. I know Muhammad taught you to be a liar because your God is a deceiver, but try to be better than your prophet. Now focus now, right? So understand the Son of Man, the Son of Man is an eternal king whose kingdom is indestructible, indestructible, and all nations must serve him. You know what that means? If Jesus is that son of man, if Jesus is that son of man, and he is, Jesus just claimed in front of the Jews, I am that divine figure who appears as a man that Daniel saw, rules forever, and my kingdom's indestructible, whom all nations must serve me, including you, the high priest. That's who Jesus just claimed to be. 
You, you caught it? Now, can I unpack the meat of this? Do you guys want meat or you want me to do surface? Do you want me to give you surface level or do you want me to go into meat? Do you want me to go into meat or surface? Because I'm not a vegan. I like meat. Let me show you why the Son of Man, the Son of Man must be God in human form. When he says one like the Son of Man means he appeared as a human being. He had a human appearance, but he was more than man. He is a divine person appearing as man. And that's who Jesus is. A divine person who is man because he becomes man and appears as a man. All right. How do we know the Son of Man is not a creature, but God in flesh distinct from the Father? Well, number one, he rides the clouds. According to the Old Testament, the Old Testament and ancient Near Eastern religions, this was something even the ancient Near Eastern pagans believed. Riding the clouds was a divine function. Only divine beings ride the clouds. Not human beings, but divine beings. And in the Old Testament, Yahweh, Jehovah, rides the clouds. Isaiah 19, verse 1. Let's unpack this. We're going to go on a lot of meat. A lot of meat. If you like meat, pray more people come and are blessed by these sessions. Right? Isaiah 19, verse 1. Okay. The burn against Egypt. Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud. So who rides the cloud? The Lord, Jehovah. And will come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt will totter at his presence. And the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst. So who rides the clouds? Jehovah. Okay, now let's go to Nahum, the book of Nahum. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 3. Nahum. Chapter 1, verse 3. Watch here. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord has his way in the whirlwind. There goes another word that hurts my lisp. Whirlwind. And in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. The clouds are the dust of his feet. So it is the Lord Jehovah who rides the clouds. But Daniel saw a figure called the Son of Man who rides the clouds of heaven. <whistles> Beauties. Oh, but it gets more. We got more. Psalm 104, Psalm 104, verse 3. Psalm 104, verse 3. Bullies, bullies, brother. Bullies. <laughs> I got Pedro saying Buddhist now. Buddhist. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot. God makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind. So the chariots of God are the clouds. The dust of Jehovah's feet are the clouds. Who rides on a swift cloud? Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahovah. You got it so far? Before I move on, I got more. Numbers 10, verse 34. Numbers 10, verse 34. Numbers 10, verse 34. Watch here. A lot of meat. And I know most of you guys already know this. I've been apologists. And the cloud of Jehovah. Whose cloud? Jehovah's cloud was above them by day when they went up from the camp. Whose cloud? Jehovah's cloud. Who's in the cloud? The Lord Jehovah. The clouds are Jehovah, the dust of Jehovah's feet. The chariots of Jehovah are the clouds. Let me give you another one from the Psalms. Psalm 68, verse 4, and verses 33 to 34. Psalm 68, verse 4, and verses 33 to 34. Okay. Psalm 68, verse 4, and verses 33 to 34. I hope you do, Jonathan. I want more of you to become. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. I'm so excited. I want to break out in praise. Praise him who rides on the clouds by his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. To him who rides on the heaven of heavens, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice. Ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. What more do you want? Do you want more proof that according to the Old Testament, 
God Almighty of Israel rides the clouds? God Almighty of Israel rides the clouds? But hold on. Let's look at Daniel 7.13 again. Daniel 7.13. Okay. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient of Days. So first question is, uh, Daniel, yes. You're a monotheist, aren't you? Yes. So the Ancient of Days is God Almighty. Yeah, absolutely. But the Son of Man is riding the clouds. Yes. But all throughout the Old Testament, Jehovah alone rides the clouds. Absolutely. But the ancient days is Jehovah, right? Yeah. But this son of man appears as a man. Son of man means one who looks human. One who looks human. So this human figure rides the clouds, something that only Jehovah does. Yes. Why is he doing what only Jehovah does in the Old Testament? Oh, because I'm not a Unitarian. I'm a Trinitarian. Oh, all this time, the Jews and the Muslims are telling me that the Old Testament prophets were Unitarians. Surprise, David. Now, do you guys want me to give you a bonus point for Ryan Reynolds? Do you want me to give you a bonus point? Do you know the Quran agrees? Do you know the Quran agrees that God rides the clouds and not someone else? Even the Quran, chapter 2, verse 210 of the Quran, Surat al-Baqarah. Interestingly, the name of the chapter is chapter of the cow. <laughs> oh, that's a horse. <laughs> bak, bak. Chapter 2, verse 210. Even the Quran agrees it is Allah who comes on the shadows of the cloud. Now I need someone to post it. Chapter 2, verse 210. Chapter 2, the chapter of the cow, verse 210. Who's going to post it before the rapture? Utter madness. Exactly, Michael. <laughs> utter, utter. I'm an utter myself. No matter what you do. Okay, chapter 2, verse 210. Read it with me. Wait they for not else than that Allah should come unto them in the shadows of the clouds with the angels. Allah should come unto them in the shadows of the clouds with the angels. Then the case would be already judged. All cases go back to Allah. Wait, Muhammad. Muhammad, you agree it is Allah who comes in the shadows of the clouds with the angels? Yes, I do. But Muhammad, Jesus says he is the son of man who rides the clouds of heaven. And guess who he comes with? Muhammad. Mark 13, 26 to 27. Mark 13, 26 to 27. What do you make? You're making beauties. Mark 13, 26 to 27, folks. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels. What do you make? And gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. Guys, did you see how Muhammad just proved Jesus claimed to be God? Muhammad said, Allah comes in the sh shadows of the clouds with the angels. Jesus says, I am the son of man who rides the clouds of heaven and send my angels to gather my elect. But wait, Jesus, you're supposed to be a Muslim. And you confirm Tawheed. But remember, Bulis, Bulis, radiallahu anhu, Bulis, alayhi salam, Bulis. So the first line of evidence, the first line of evidence <laughs> that the Son of Man is more than a human being. Wait, 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 wait. The first line of evidence that the Son of Man is more than a human being. He is human. Because when you say Son of Man, that means a human figure. But that he's more than a human, first line of evidence, he rides the clouds. Something that the Old Testament and even Muhammad said is true of God alone. That's number one. Second line of evidence, Daniel 7, 14. Wait, 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 wait. Bulis, alayhi salam, radiallahu anhu. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Daniel 7, 14. 
Yeah, Bulis is the Arabic for Paul. Okay, Daniel 7, 14. Okay. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. Man, what are you makers? Serve him. Folks, the word serve comes from the Aramaic verb pilach. Aramaic verb pilach. All nations must serve him. Folks, you know what that means for Muslims? You Muslims, even the prophet Daniel said, all you Muslims, all you Muslim nations, all nations must serve Jesus, the Son of Man. You are slaves of Jesus, the Son of Man. According to the prophet Daniel, Muslims, all nations, meaning all Muslim nations, and even your prophet, must render to Jesus ibadah. Ibadah. Okay? Because that's what God revealed to Daniel, this son of man who rides the clouds, every nation, every human creature, all nations must serve him. And guess what the word for worship is in Islam? Ibadah, which means slaving or serving. And guess what the category of worship in Islam is called? Tawheed al-Ibadah, the oneness of the service or worship of Allah. Ibadah. Abid, 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 meaning slave. And Daniel said, all of you must be Abdul Masih. All of you must be Abdul Ibn Insan. Abdul Yesuah. Abdul Ibn Allah. That's what Daniel just said. The servants of Messiah serving him. You must give him ibadah. You got it? Now, the Aramaic for serve, the Aramaic for serve is pilach. Let me show you why this is important. Let me get it for you. You guys wanted meat, so I'm giving you meat. Here, let me give it to you. So here, I'm going to give you, thank the Lord for modern technology, Daniel 7, 14. Daniel 7, 14, pilach. Here it is. Let me give you the link. You don't even need to read the Hebrew. You can see it in transliteration. I don't know what debate you're talking about, brother. Okay, go there. Click on it. Go there. Click on it. You'll see it's Aramaic. And the word... You'll see it comes from Pilach. Pilach. Okay, Pilach. Go here. Go click on it, folks. Do you know that according to Daniel, Pilach is to be given to God alone, and you can't give it to anyone else. In fact, in Daniel, do you know why Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego were thrown into the fire? I'm going to show it to you because they refused to give Pilach to any other god but their own. Let me show you Daniel three verse twelve. Pilach. It's right there. I gave you the link, Candence. Go here. Pilach. I'm scared to give this guy a mod hat. He might block people. Pilach. Not Ilah, man. Pilach, dude. Okay, now. Daniel 3.12. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve Pilach, your gods, or worship the gold image which you have set up. They refuse to give pilach to your gods. Okay, now Daniel 3.14. Daniel 3.14. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, that you do not serve pilach, my gods, or worship the gold image which I have set up? Daniel 3.17.18. Notice what they say. Watch here. That is the case. Our God, whom we serve, guess what the verb is, guys? Pilach. Serve is able to deliver us from the burning fire, fiery furnace. 
and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve Pilach, your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Did you catch it? They say, we only give Pilach to our God and to no other. And you cannot make us give Pilach to any other God. We'd rather burn alive than give Pilach to any other God. And then Jesus shows up and saves them. And Daniel 3, 28. Exactly, Peter. We will not serve the false God of don't convert to Islam. Daniel 3, verse 28. Watch here. We're going to have some fun with this. Oh, but it's going to get better. It's going to get better, folks. <laughs> no matter what you do. Okay, watch. Daniel 3, 28. We're going to have fun today. I'm excited today. Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel, that happens to be Jesus, by the way, not a creature, but his messenger, and delivered his servants who trusted in him, and they have frustrated the king's word. They went against my word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve Pilach, nor worship any god except their own god. Could it be any clearer that according, according to Daniel, Pilach is to be given only to the true God and to no one else? By the way, Justin Martyr quotes Daniel 7 against Trifo the Jew. Do you guys know what the word in Greek is? Because there are variants in the Septuagint. There are certain Greek versions of the Old Testament that use the word du, uh, dualeo, dualeo, but other versions use uh, latruo, latruo. For you who speak Latin, latruo is latria. In Daniel 7, in certain copies of the Greek, and in, in Justin Martyr's citation, it says the Son of Man receives latruo. Latruo, which is in Latin, latria. Do you know why that's amazing? Because in Matthew 4.10, Jesus says, you are to give latruo only to God. Latruo is to be given only to God. And yet, pilach, the Aramaic word pilach, is rendered as latruo in Greek, showing the Son of Man receives the very latruo that Jesus says only God is to receive. Mario Merck. Do you see that, Matthew 4.10? Post it one more time, brother. Matthew 4.10. Watch here. No, he's not quoting the uh, Septuagint, Jonathan. Matthew is writing this in Greek. Luke is writing this in Greek. And so either he spoke Aramaic, because I don't know what language he would have spoken to the devil. Maybe it was a spiritual language. I don't know. But when they translate Jesus' words, they translate in Greek. Now, Jonathan, pay attention to the last part. And him only shall, him only you shall serve. Him only you shall serve. Guess what the word serve is? Latruo. That means if I were translated back into Aramaic, only God is to be given pilach. Let me give you the Greek for that. What are you, Merck, man? This is Merkin. Shekin Birkin. I'm going crazy here. I don't know if Al D is here. Al D poisoned me. He taught me what are you, Merck. And it's stuck on me ever since then. Let me show you what the word is. Him only you shall serve. So don't take my word for it because I'm a heretic. According to don't convert to Islam, I'm a heretic. And I make about $100,000 a year for ministry. So I'm, I'm one of these crooks. So, you know, according to him. And the Muslims that love him. Now, when you go there, click there. Okay, click there. This guy thinks he's upsetting me. I'm, I'm scared of don't convert to Islam. Do you see the word? Him only. Latrioses. 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 Guess what latrioses is, folks? It's latruo. It's latruo. Only God is to be given Latruo. Sai Christian, remember, you're you're my partner in crime. 
You and me both make about 500 G's a year, man. What's up, baby? And by the way, I'm kidding. We may have lawyers listening to me. I don't <laughs> they might be taking me seriously. See, see, judge, judge. He admitted he makes 100000 a year. He's hiding the money, judge. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, now, with that said, did you confirm the word is Latruo? You guys confirm it's Latruo? So Jesus says, Pilach, Latruo, is to be given only to God. But the Son of Man is given Pilach, which the Greek renders it as Latruo. <whistles> what beauties. Okay, Daniel 6.16. Daniel 6.16, Daniel 6.20, and Daniel 6.26. Daniel 6.16, Daniel 6.20, and Daniel 6.26. So Daniel chapter 6, verse 16, chapter 6, verse 20, and 26. Read with me. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually. Guess what the word serve is? Pirach. The God that you give Pilach continually, he will deliver you. Verse 20. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lament, lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has God whom you serve, whom you give Pilach continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Now notice 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one that shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall not shall endure to the end. His kingdom shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall endure to the end. Wait. So the true God receives Pilach alone. No other God can be given Pilach. The true God rides the clouds of heaven. The true God, his kingdom is eternal and will never end. All of which is said about the Son of Man, who is not the Ancient of Days. So the Ancient of Days is on the throne, and the Son of Man comes on the clouds and approaches him. And what is said about the true God is said about the Son of Man, who appears as a human being. That's why he's the Son of Man, who reigns as long as God does, who rides the clouds like God does, and receives the same worship that God receives from all nations. And this is in the book of Daniel. Bulis, bulis. Right? Oh, but it's going to get a little juicier. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you really want to get blown away? Yes, he was, Bozak. Daniel 4 shows that he came to the knowledge of the true God and acknowledged the true God and worshiped the true God. And that's why God restored him. So he's a believer. Okay. Bulis, bulis. Okay, and are you ready for something that shocked you? I got multiple part articles on this. Remind me before we end the session to give you the articles on this passage. Daniel 7, 27. Johannes, Paul in Arabic is bulus, 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 bulus. So they call him bulus. So I say bulus, bulus, bulus radilaha anhu. Okay, Daniel 7, 27. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. So it'll be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom, the Most High's kingdom, is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey who? Shall serve and obey him. Did you catch it? Did you catch what it says? The Most High... His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all the kings will serve Pilach, give him Pilach, and obey him. And that's in the same chapter. Let's put it back to back. Let's put Daniel 7.14 and 7.27 back to back. Ryan, did your God tell you to be a wicked, evil, woman-raping liar? Who blocked him? Stone smoocher? Okay. Okay. Daniel 7, 14 and 27, back to back. Read with me, guys. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom 
that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. But now notice, same chapter. What does it say about the Most High? Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom, the Most High, is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominions shall serve and obey Him, the Most High. So I'm confused. Help me understand. The same chapter says the Son of Man's kingdom is eternal and destructible. All nations, languages, people serve Him. Later on in the chapter, the saints will inherit the kingdom of the Most High. The Most High's kingdom is everlasting. And all dominions must pilach and obey Him, the Most High. And folks, this is Old Testament. But I'm going to blow you away even more. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Bullis, what's going on, Bullis? You ain't seen nothing yet. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is really going to shock you. You want to get shocked, folks? No matter what you do, I'm going crazy. Here you're going to have to click on the link. You know what the word for most high is? You know what the word for most high is? Click on it. Now they're going to transliterate it differently. Click on it. It's El Yonin or Yonin. You know what that is? That's plural. Literally, most highs. No, it's not El Elyon, Jonathan. You're trying hard, brother. I love you. No. El Yonin. Plural, most highs. Highest ones. It's a plural, folks. It's a plural. It's not El Shaddai. Guys, put down the pipe. Stop pretending you know. Click on the link and see. You'll see it's El Yonin or Yonin. Now they translate it, translate it differently. It's literal. The literal is highest ones. It's literally plural. It's literally a plural. Highest ones, most highs. Okay, do you see it? First click on it and see it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Okay, don't take my word for it. Okay, Daniel 7.18. Daniel 7.18. Daniel 7.18. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. That's talking about believers in Christ. God will let us share in his kingdom. Guys, guess what the word for Most High is? Can you guys go click there? Click on it so you don't take my word for it. Most High is El Yonin. Plural, the kingdom of the highest ones, most highs. Look at it. It'll tell you it's plural, uh, but it's going to get a little better. Daniel 7, 22. Watch here. I'm going to show you why it's plural now. Anna, they got it before Christ, after Christ. They saw the problems, and I'll talk about it in a minute. Until the Ancient of Days came. Now, hold on. Who's coming? The Ancient of Days or the Son of Man? Here it says, the Ancient of Days will come, and the judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High, and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. So notice in 22, who's coming? The Ancient of Days. But wait, let me show you something. Guess what the word for Most High is? Here's the link. Here's the link. Guess what the word for Most High is? Elyonin, plural, highest ones. So now, folks, walk with me as I try to walk you through this slowly. I'm going to walk you through this slowly. Son of man approaches the ancient days. That's two. Both of them rule on thrones over all creation. 
And the Son of Man arises on behalf of the saints of the Most High. Then we're told the Ancient of Days comes in their defense. Ancient of Days, Son of Man, arise in defense of the saints of the Most High. The word Most High is plural, highest ones. Ancient of Days, Son of Man, the word for Most High, plural, Elyonin, highest ones. Why is it plural? Because you have two, Ancient of Days and the Son of Man. And that's why it's plural, because they are the most highs, the highest ones. I'm going crazy. I'd rather be alone. Oh, but I'm going to show you something else. Wait, we're not done yet. <laughs> In me power. Daniel 7, 25. Are you guys getting meat? Are you guys getting meat? No matter what you do. I gave you the link to check it out. I haven't looked at the verb. There's a verb. Anyway, don't worry about the verb now. Just watch. Okay, watch here. Daniel 7, 25. Guys, let's eat steak. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Guys, pay attention. Post it one more time because I need you to pay attention to this. Daniel 7, 25. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Notice there's two occurrences of Most High. Shall persecute the saints of the Most High and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time and times and a half a time. Okay? Guys, do you see there are two occurrences of the word Most High, right? Do you see if there are two occurrences? And by the way, John in Revelation picks up on this imagery. Time, times, and a half a time. Two occurrences, right? Folks, guess what the first occurrence of Most High happens to be? It's singular. Elia, Ela'a. Ela'a, Elia, Ela'a. Singular. But the second occurrence of Most High is plural. Elyonin. Did you catch it? So Daniel knows about the singular form. He uses it here, but then he uses the plural. Why is he using the singular and why is he using the plural? Because contextually, the singular may be a reference to the Father or even the Son of Man. But then he uses the plural to then denote Ancient of Days and the Son of Man together. No, Adonai doesn't just mean Father. Adonai can refer to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Guys, please don't pontificate in the comment section. Here, don't take my word for it. Guys, don't take my word for it. Click on the link. The first occurrence of Most High, it's singular. But the second is plural, Elyonin. Why is it plural? Why is it plural? Because Daniel has already showed you two divine persons who reign together as the highest ones over all creation, whom all nations must worship and serve forever. You with me there? Before I move on? Anthony Buzzard doesn't know Hebrew. He pretends to know Hebrew. He's a joke. Just like Roger Perkins pretended to know Hebrew and he got slaughtered by the grace of the triumph God. That debate's coming out. Once it comes out, I'll get you the link. Okay. Why? Plural. Highest ones. Most highs. Why? Now let's unpack it one more time. Daniel 7, verses 9 to 10. And for those who've been following me, you've already heard this because I've discussed this in the past. But for those of you new, I see it's blowing your minds away. Even for those of you who know, it seems like it's still blowing your minds away. Glory to God. These text messages don't stop. It's stuck for a lot of blasphemy. Okay, now watch. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. Guys, count how many thrones. Count how many thrones, please. I watched till thrones were put in place. Thrones, plural. Guys, please watch and learn. Your God is triune and he's real. He's alive. He lives. And death is not the end of us because the triune God lives and he's given irrefutable proof of his existence in the Bible. It's Trinitarian from beginning to end. Now read with me, guys. Okay. Daniel 7, 9 to 10. 
I watched till thrones, plural, not one, were put in place. And the Ancient of Days was seated. So here's one divine figure. Ancient of Days was seated. Now this Ancient of Days appears visibly to Daniel because Daniel describes what he looks like. He's got a garment. His garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. So he's got hair. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Okay, guys. Two thrones. Upon one is the Ancient of Days. He sits on one throne. He appears visibly with a garment and white hair. So he's a visible appearance of the Ancient of Days on a throne. Who sits on the other throne? Daniel 7, 13 and 14. I don't know who you are, Cross and Crescent Discretion Group, to come back. I don't know. Anyway, Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Oh, is this? Uh, anyway. Daniel 7, 13 14. Brother Bass, you don't need to guess. Here it is. The other throne is for the Son of Man. I was watching on the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Son of Man comes to the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days is already seated. Son of Man comes to take the other seat. Why? How do we know? Because it says, to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. Well, if you have a kingdom, dominion, you have a throne. That all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. Okay, did you catch it? Why two thrones? Ancient of days, son of man. Two. But folks, according to Jesus, no, the clouds are not angels. What I mean? Oh, I can't do that because Anna's going to get angry. No, my friend, my brother from different mother. Don't let me hands, lay hands on you. Jesus is not writing the angels. The angels are not the dust of his feet. It's stuck for Allah, Rabbil Alameen. All right. Are you with me there? Logos. Okay. Two thrones, right? One is the Ancient of Days, seated on, and the other the Son of Man. Okay. Again, according to Jesus in the New Testament, who is the Son of Man that comes in the clouds of heaven? Umberto. What objections does he has against the triune God that haven't been decimated? If you're impressed by his objections, then you need to study more. Who is the Son of Man who comes on the clouds of heaven? Jesus, right? So he takes one throne. Then who's the Ancient of Days? Who's the Ancient of Days? Okay, let's try this again. If Jesus is the Son of Man... Who's the Ancient of Days? The Son of Man is not the Ancient of Days. The Father, right? Okay. I don't know if you caught it. You, I don't think you caught it. Did you know that Daniel saw the Father in visible form and Jesus in visible form? That's what you just read? Do you know you just read that? He saw the Father in visible form and Jesus in human form. I don't know if you caught it. That was Daniel 7, 9 to 10. He saw the Ancient of Days with a robe and white hair. That means the Father appeared visibly on a throne in a visible shape for Daniel to see. And he saw Jesus in human form coming to him. Guys, can you send anyone who comes and attacks any church here? Folks, please respect me. Don't attack any church here. Catholics don't attack Protestants or Orthodox. Orthodox don't attack Catholics or Protestants. And Protestants don't attack Catholics or Orthodox. And do not attack the Assyrian Church of the East or even Coptics. Leave them be. They're welcome here. Don't start sectarian debates, please. Okay? Focus with me. I want to benefit all you guys. Did you catch it? Good. Praise God. Did you catch it? Praise God, he opened the churches. May God, I can't, I can't even say may God bless Trump because I'll get some people who may be anti-Trump and <laughs> start attacking me. <laughs> okay, follow with me. So truth defender, stop attacking even fellow Protestants, you Moriite. Okay, focus with me. 
Do you see how amazingly rich the book of Daniel is? Do you see how amazingly rich the book of Daniel is? Daniel is an Old Testament book, not written by Christians. And Daniel is saturated with the Trinity. Daniel sees the Father in visible form, sees the Son of Man, Messiah, whom we know to be Jesus, in visible human form, sees two thrones that the Ancient of Days and the Son of Man share. That's Father and Son. And they are the most high, the highest ones over creation. No wonder he used the plural, El Yonin, meaning highest ones. Take a moment and be blown away with how real your triune God is. Folks, what Jew would corrupt the Old Testament to agree with Christian theology? What Jew would corrupt the Old Testament to agree with the New Testament that God is triune? No Jew would ever do that. And yet their Old Testament, which they preserve, not just Christians, confirms the Trinity in the New Testament, not the God of rabbinic Judaism or the God of Muslims. Isn't that another proof God has preserved his Bible so that humans couldn't corrupt the original wording, but it's been preserved? Is, isn't that amazing? You know why C99? Now, C99 asked me a good question. Why no translations render correctly? Do you know why, C99? Because they're afraid heretics like these Mohammedans will accuse the Bible of polytheism. Brother Bass, why does Daniel need to see three thrones when his focus is on the Son of Man arising in our defense and approaching the Father to be enthroned? The better question, Brother Bass, is who enabled Daniel to see that vision? You want me to show you the Holy Spirit in the book of Daniel? Do you want me to show you the Holy Spirit in the book of Daniel so that you see he's a Trinitarian? So you don't lose sleep and you don't get angry? Why didn't he see three? <laughs> okay. It was the Holy Spirit that enabled and empowered Daniel to have these visions of God. Daniel 5.11 and 5.14. Daniel 5.11 and 5.14. Logos. No, he doesn't. Jesus is our Passover lamb. Don't overread too much. Jesus is our Passover lamb. I'm going to have to lay hands on you. Daniel 5, 11 and 14. The fire is not the Holy Spirit. No. Okay. Daniel 5, 11 and 14. Okay, read. There is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. So the Holy Spirit indwells Daniel, enabling him to have these visions and interpret them. And in the days of your father, light and understanding, wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magician, magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. And then 14, I have heard of you that the Spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Wow, there's the Trinity, folks. Who was in Daniel, enabling Daniel to see these visions and understand what he was seeing and write them down? The Spirit of the Holy God. No, Thomas, Daniel wasn't a man in his kingdom. He was an animal. He was a sheep in his kingdom. Thomas, please, brother, put down the pipe, Thomas Yo. Please. What was Daniel, if not a man, in his kingdom? No, he was a donkey in his kingdom. A stuck for the luck. What kind of question is this? He's a man who lives in his kingdom. It's like me saying Thomas is a donkey who lives in China. Come on, man. Oh, the Billah, Man Muhammad Rajim. Buddhist, Buddhist, Buddhist. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, did everyone get it? Do you see the Trinity in Daniel now? Who's inspiring da Daniel? Who's empowering Daniel to have visions of heaven, to see future realities, 
and record them? The Spirit of the Holy God. Wait, 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 wait. Clear? Before I move on? Who would have thunk it that Daniel is a Trinitarian book? See, as a Trinitarian, I can exp understand why the Bible used singular nouns, pronouns, verbs, participles for God, and also used plural nouns, pronouns, <clears throat> participles, verbs for God. Because God is one, and he is many. One in one way, three in another way. So our Bible uses singulars and plurals for our God. No, Bozak, I'm not Baptist, dude. Right? God bless you. Everyone getting in or no? Daniel 5, 11, and 14, yes. So now, are you blown away that Daniel used the plural, Elionin, highest ones, in a chapter where he sees two divine persons exalted on two thrones, signifying they're not the same person, they're distinct persons, one in human form, the other in visible form, and both of them equally rule over all creation and allow their servants to share in their rule as they rule over all creation and receive the same worship from all creatures. So you understand why the high priest now got upset at Jesus? Because he thought it blasphemy that Jesus claimed to be that divine figure. You're a flesh and blood Jew, no more, no less. How could you claim to be that son of man of Daniel? Who do you think you are? Yeah, now when they die, if they're believers, they go to heaven. Don't ask me a topic 1.9b that has nothing to do with my discussion. I've already discussed that in previous sessions. Do you understand why the high priest was blown away and angry and rent his clothes and wanted to kill him? Because thy priest saw a flesh and blood Jew. You just claim to be that figure who rules with the Most High, whom all nations must worship? You think you're him? Blasphemy. You catch it now? So let's go back to Mark 14, 62 to 64. Wait, 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 wait. Mark 14, 60 to 64, because now I'm going to show you an objection and how to refute it. Now I'm going to show you an objection and how to refute it. Okay? They bring up an objection and how to refute it. Mark 14, 62 to 64, but it's okay. You like to give me, unless I said 60, you're probably right. I did say 60. Sorry. Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, what further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Did you catch it? Okay, now, why did he think it's blasphemous? Because he did not believe you, a flesh and blood Jew, are that son of man, that glorious human figure who rides the clouds, who shares in God's dominion and worship forever? You think you're him? Kill him. Aston, what Jews and when? Jews are not monolithic in their belief. Right? Now let me blow your minds a little further. You guys wanted meat, right? I may just have to stick with this passage. Exactly, Peter. Let me blow your minds away a little further. Are you ready? You, you thought you're blown away now? You want to get blown away even more by the power of the Holy Spirit as he illuminates us? I got more. Pray I'm not too loud. I don't distract the neighbors, man. I just hope they don't get upset with me. Exactly, Deanne Collins. God bless you for your wisdom. Deanne Collins, perfect. It's not that they had a problem with the Son of Man. They knew he existed in Daniel. They had a problem with Jesus claiming to be that Son of Man. Exactly, Johannes Aramean. That's why they're Messianic Jews. Okay. Remember, he's a high priest, right? Okay. Understand how shocked they were to hear what Jesus just said. 
if you've ever read Leviticus 16, let me unpack it because I want to give you meat. I want you to have a full course dinner tonight, spiritual dinner, and then some dessert. Okay? Follow with me. Follow with me. The high priest, Leviticus 16, you can read this Leviticus 16, could only enter the earthly tabernacle. Remember, there's an earthly tabernacle temple. There's the holy place where the priests serve and the most holy place separated by a curtain. That's Leviticus 16 and Hebrews 9, verses 1 to 12. Hebrews 9, verses 1 to 12. Write this down. Specifically, Hebrews 9, verses 1 to 8. Okay? You had the holy and the most holy separated by a curtain. And the holy place in the temple, the priest could serve. But behind the curtain, the most holy place, was the mercy seat. The Ark of the Covenant, right? <clears throat> the cherubim attached to the Ark. And in the first temple, the tablets that God wrote, the Ten Commandments, a golden jar of manna as a reminder of how God provided for them 40 years, right? Aaron's rod that budded miraculously is a sign that he was the one that God chose. According to Leviticus 16, the high priest could only enter once a year in the most holy place. He could only enter behind the curtain once a year with a sacrifice for himself and for the nation that God would accept, and he had to come out. Now, only once a year, only once a year, he could do it. If it so happened that God wasn't pleased with the sacrifice, if he entered there, God would kill him dead. And so tradition says they would have to tie a rope to his ankle in case he got struck dead because no one could go after him and pull him out because they'd be killed dead. So they'd have to drag his dead carcass out. That's the earthly tabernacle. Are you with me there? Yep, bells and, and rope. Are you with me there? That's the earthly one. The earthly one is nothing like the heavenly one. Now, because in the heavenly one, God the Father is there visibly, visibly on a throne, a visible throne, and a visible form that the angels see. Now, can you imagine if the earthly one is so sacred that if you go in the most holy place, an unworthy man there, you'd be killed dead, how much more dangerous it is to approach the heavenly most holy and see God in his visibly glory how much more dangerous it is to approach him in an unworthy manner in heaven. Right? You understand? Is that clear? I want it to sink in before I move on to the next point. Okay. Now, why am I sharing this? Because you know what Jesus just told I priest? You guys don't catch the implication. Did you catch what he said to the high priest? I, the son of man, will be seated at the right hand of power. He just told the high priest, you can only enter the earthly tabernacle once a year, the most holy place, and need to come out. You know who I am? I'm going to be seated in the heavenly most holy place on the mercy seat in heaven next to God. Not only will I enter there, I'll be seated there. You understand why you were shocked? Do you understand why he was shocked and blown away? Now imagine you're a high priest or you're a Jew. You're a Jew. You're seeing a flesh and blood Jew stand in front of you. Guys, please put yourself in their shoes. We're Christians. We know Jesus is God. But can you imagine a Jew shows up and he tells you, you know who I am? I'm that son of man that Daniel saw who rides the clouds of heaven, who will be in heaven on the throne of the Father, seated next to him on the right, right side. You understand what that's going to do to you? That's going to shock you, blow your mind, and turn your world upside down to hear such a man say this. But then guess what? He leaves the tomb empty. He's raised from the dead. He becomes physically immortal as a sign that God amen what he said. The father says, amen. Whatever he said is absolutely true because God doesn't resurrect blasphemers and liars to immortal glory. 
So the disciples had no choice but to believe, wow, all this time we were eating, drinking, sleeping next to a human being who is God Almighty in the flesh, who is not the Father, but the Father, Son, and is equal. And we didn't fully realize it. You understand who they were sitting next to? Who they were sleeping next to? You understand who was hugging them and kissing them and laying hands on them? The human hands of the eternal Son, Jehovah God Almighty, one with the Father, who is worthy to approach the Father in heaven and sit next to him. That's who was walking in their midst. That's who was walking in their midst. And they didn't fully understand it. Can you imagine how they were kicking themselves for saying, wow, the God of Israel was living with us and we didn't fully knew, knew who he was. Oh, my goodness. We had the God of Israel entering our home. The God of Israel sleeping in the bed next to us. The God of Israel hugging us. The God of Israel kissing us with his human lips. The God of Israel eating our food. That was the God of Israel we were walking with. Is it sinking in now? But in his love and mercy, right? But you know, in his love and mercy, he didn't allow them to fully comprehend it. Do you know why? Because if they fully comprehended this was God, they couldn't dwell in his presence or he had to change their nature. Why? Because can you imagine Jesus shows up? Let me now bring it down. Why? It was the mercy of Jesus that did not allow them to fully comprehend. Let me explain what I mean. If you know Jesus is God and he lives with you and you're a sinner with a sinful body and sinful inclinations, you'd be second, second guessing every word and action because you'd be too afraid. You understand what I'm saying? If Jesus is sitting next to me, I wouldn't even dare say a word because I'm thinking I would go silent because I'm afraid to say the wrong thing and think the wrong thing because he knows. So Jesus in his mercy veiled them from fully understanding who he was so they could coexist. They could dwell in his presence. Do you know that? Let me give you a proof of that. You guys think I'm, I'm lying. Let me prove it to you. That if they were allowed to understand who he was, he would have to change their nature to be morally incorruptible so they could dwell in his presence or they couldn't handle it. They would actually say, Lord, please depart from my presence because I can't dwell in your presence in this nature. Let me prove it to you. Peter, when he had a moment of realization this man is more than a man. Look what he says in Luke 5, 7 to 8. Luke 5, 7 to 8. Exactly, Sai Christian. Let me prove it to you. Say, no, I'm not making it up. Luke 5, 7 to 8. Let me show you. I will. Just be patient, guys. I'll summarize all these points. Say, no, I'm not making it up. So they, they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled, filled both the boats so that they began to sink. Notice what Peter said, when P Simon Peter saw the miraculous catch of fish, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. You see what he said? I can't dwell in your presence. You're too holy and I'm too sinful. I can't last in your presence because of my sin. You catch it? Do you see it? So this was the love of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus, the mercy of Jesus for not allowing them to fully comprehend who he was so that they could dwell in his presence. Notice how beautiful your Lord is, and this should move you in your spirit. Jesus, in his infinite love mercy, tolerated their imperfection and sinfulness and didn't rise up in anger and wrath and destroy them justifiably because they would deserve it. In his love and mercy, he constrained his righteous anger to dwell in his pres their presence in love and mercy 
and in his love and mercy kept them from fully comprehending who he was so they could walk with him. Do you see how beautiful he is? If this doesn't move you in your spirit, I don't know what will. Right? If this doesn't move you, how merciful and loving and compassionate Jesus is, I don't know what will. That the infinite holy God, in his love, constrains himself. Yeah, I'm about to cry too. <clears throat> so he doesn't rise up in anger to destroy us, but loves on us, smiles, and blesses us. And in his mercy, did not allow these men to realize who he was. They got glimpses. He allowed them to get glimpses, but did not allow them to fully comprehend that who he was, the God of Israel, so they could walk with him. Can I give you another example to prove my point? When they got glimpses of who he was, they were overwhelmed with terror and fear and dread. Can I give you another example so you know I'm not making it up? Yep. And Acts 17, the heretical prophet, white supremacist. Can I give you another example? Mark 4, 35 to 41. Doesn't this make you fall more in love with Jesus? Honestly, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I hope he does this work for the glory of Christ. Doesn't this make you just be more in love with your God? Love the Father, Son, Holy Spirit even more and be more amazed how real he is and how real his word is? Mark 4, 35 to 41. Watch here, guys. Here's another example. Mark 4, 35 to 41. Another example. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, man, this is going to move me too in my spirit. Let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Now, notice our Lord, the divine and human nature is in one person. And other little boats were also with him. Watch this, guys. Watch. I love this one. This one I love. Watch what happens. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. Here's the human Jesus sleeping, a human activity. He's asleep. I'm not saying he snores. I'm just playing it out. Right? And by the way, snoring is not an imperfection, so don't stone me for that. He's asleep. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, remember, folks, these were experienced fishermen. They knew how bad the conditions were. They knew that the conditions were so bad, they're about to drown because they were experts when it came to fishing and the sea. They knew we're in trouble, guys. We're in trouble. And Jesus is sleeping. Now watch here. Do you not care that we are perishing? Now watch here. I love this. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Now watch. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Now notice 41. 41 is the key. Post 41 one more time. 41 is the key. Watch their reaction. Watch their reaction here, 41. And they feared exceedingly. They were horrified and terrified and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? See, they were frightened because they knew this is no ordinary human being. But you see the power of the Lord? All he needed to say to the wind and the sea, the wind and the waves, peace. Be still. And even the winds and the waves recognize the voice of their creator. Did it sink in? Because the Old Testament's quite clear. It is the voice of Jehovah that calms the winds and the waves and the seas. The wind had enough common sense. The waves had enough common sense to know that's the voice of our master, our creator, and we must obey. And it went silent. You with me there? And they realized this is no ordinary man. And they got afraid. Who is this 
that's sleeping in the boat. Who is this man that even the winds and the waves knew the power of his voice and submitted to his voice immediately? Who is he? They started freaking out. You guys listening or no? Do you understand? So can you imagine when he finally did open their minds and they realized who he was? Can you imagine what they were thinking to themselves? Wow. My goodness. For over three years, maybe I don't know how long he ministered. Can you imagine Peter looking at John saying, John, John, you understand who was in our midst for over three years? John, you understood who was in our homes, sleeping in our beds, eating our food, smiling at us? See, this is where it's going to move me. <clears throat> you understand who was smiling at us? <clears throat> that was the human smile of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. John, the God of Israel, walked in our midst in flesh. John, you remember that time <clears throat> when his lips kissed your head? You know who was kissing you, John? The God of Israel. The God of Abraham kissed my, my cheeks. The God of Abraham kissed my head. <clears throat> the God of Abraham smiled at me. The God of Abraham hugged me and embraced me. We had the living God of Israel in our midst as a flesh and blood Jew. <clears throat> wow. Amazing, isn't he? Okay. So you see how Mark 14, 60 to 64... Shows that Jesus is an eternal divine person distinct from the Father, right? But now what's the objection? Because I want to answer the objection. Let me get some to drink because I want to answer the objection because there's an objection. See, anti-Trinitarians can't simply submit and say, we will let God be God and we will love and worship God as he is. They got to argue and say, no, it can't be true. Can't be true. Let me bring up an objection, but let me get, let me get some to drink. Let me sing to entertain you so Haterwood doesn't come and do a hit and run. You know why that heretic comes? Because he wants to learn theology. Because his theology sucks, and he comes to listen to me to learn theology, steal my ideas, make videos that go viral and make millions, and I'm broke. We were sailing along on a blind day. On a track, and I'll hand walk Oh, I love you too much, baby. What can't you see? Right. Yeah, he sucks, man. And yet the guy goes viral. He gets a thousand people for his boring. And guys, come on, man. Let's bear witness. When he has someone on, he speaks 90% of the time. All right. Now, here's the objection. You want to see how desperate and pathetic they got? Truth defenders, believe it or not, when I figure out how to do like Skype where I can show people, I'm going to get you on to talk about apologetics, you little sinner, hater. Because someone's got to give you your 15 minutes of fame. Okay, now, <clears throat> you want to hear the objection? You want to laugh? And we'll be done with Mark 13.32. You want to hear what the objection is? You want to see how desperately pathetic they are? That they just can't accept the Trinity and let God be God in the Bible, teach the Trinity? You want to hear how pathetically bad they are, their arguments? Ah, oh, but wait. The Son of Man was given kingdom and power and dominion. Someone else gave it to him. If someone else gives it to him, then he can't be equal to that person. So there you go, Trinitarian. So you're an Arian. Surprise, David. That's their objection. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Antonio, because Ishmael is not part of the covenant. He can be blessed by the God of Israel, but he's not part of the covenant. Now, everyone with me? Now, you ready to refute that objection? 
Yeah, they do come up with it. You know how many people have come up with it? Zero one. Who? I've heard Unitarians, Muslims, Joe's Witnesses. But you know how you know how you respond to that? Do you want to hear the response to that? Let me show you the response. Okay. The reason why the Son of Man is given kingdom and dominion and power is because if you let the Bible speak, he came to the earth and humbled himself to take the status of a slave. And he set apart his kingly divine authority for a season. And where's the proof of it? Let's go to Mark 10, 45. Mark 10, 45. So let me show you how to refute this. No, Riaz, look what you did. My brother Riaz, I'm going to teach you how not to make your case. If they're going to quote Mark, stick with Mark. Then you bring in Philippians. Don't run to Paul when Mark is at hand. Because they'll say you, tell you that. The Bible simply contradicts itself. Mark 10, 45. Okay. Follow with me. Mark 10, 45. Let's refute this stupid objection. Before the rapture, Protestant. Or we're going to leave you behind. Mark 10, 45. What happened to this guy? Did he check out? For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So on earth... Was Jesus functioning in his role as king or was he functioning as a slave, a servant, a slave of the father who for the father's sake served us? Mark 10, 45. The son of man did not come to be served. He's still a man in heaven, Pedro. It has nothing to do with his humanity. He's still a man in heaven. The son of man did not come to be served. He came to serve. Okay, now, secondly, let's see if the other Gospels agree. Matthew 12, Matthew 12, 17 to 18. What was Jesus on earth? What, thank you, Daniel, or God bless you. What position did he take on earth? Yes, Pedro, exactly. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, verse 18, saying, Behold my servant. See, my son is now my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. Luke twenty two twenty seven. Thank you, prof. God bless you, brother. Luke twenty two twenty seven. Luke 22, 27. Watch here. Jesus speaking. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I am among you as the one who serves. See, I didn't come with royal <clears throat> authority. I came humbly as a servant to serve you. And that's also found. We're not going to read it. Write down John 13, verses 3 to 17, where Jesus puts a towel, stoops down, the God of Israel stoops down and washes the dirty feet of human maggots. That John 13, verses 3 to 17. So even John confirms it. What about Paul? Romans 15, verse 8. See, now I'm giving you the consistent testimony of Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, Paul. Luke, Romans 15, verse 8. That's what we are. We're human maggots. Watch here. Romans 15, verse 8. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision. He came to be a servant to the Jews. Why? For the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. Okay, so on earth, did he come with his royal power, his divine authority? Or did he come as a servant who set aside his royal power and authority. What status did he have on earth? A servant. So he humbled himself to become the slave of the father for the sake of serving us. And then what happens? The father in response... 
the father responds, then exalts him and gives him back the authority he voluntarily set aside. That's where Philippians 2, 5 to 11 comes in. You don't need to quote it. Don't quote Philippians 2, 5 to 11. I'll just read it. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, though being in the form of God, or you can say who being in very nature God, did not consider his equality with God something to take advantage of or exploit, but humbled himself, taking the form of a slave and found in human likeness, being born as a man, became obedient, even obedient to the death on a cross. Therefore, because Jesus did that, voluntarily and humbled, humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and given him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, and every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's when you bring in Philippians 2, 5 to 11. So what's the answer? Jesus was given a dominion that was his by divine right, but what he set aside. So he wasn't given something that wasn't already his by divine right. He was given something that he voluntarily set aside to serve us and save us. Dea, you know you need to get out of here, right? Because you're another wicked, filthy Mohammedan misquoting scripture because the very passage in Genesis 17, read 19 to 21 says, but my covenant was with Isaac, not Ishmael. You wicked Mohammedan, you're worse than Muhammad. You think you're slick. These Muslims think that I'm stupid. I was born yesterday. I wasn't born yesterday. I was born, born the day before. So, folks, what's the answer? The answer is Jesus is receiving from the Father a kingdom that is his by divine right, but which he voluntarily set aside. You see the answer? But here's how you turn it against them. Here's how you flip it against them. Both the Old Testament and the Quran agree. No creature can be exalted to the status of God and share in his worship. That would be idolatry. No creature can be exalted to the status of God and share in his worship. Both the Quran and the Hebrew Bible agrees. Therefore, for God to allow the Son of Man to share in his status and receive his worship, if the Son of Man is a creature, that would be idolatry. But if the Son of Man is no creature, it makes perfect sense. Let me prove it to you. Are you ready? From the Hebrew Bible and the Quran. Flip it against them. Are you ready? From the Hebrew Bible and the Quran. Lord, please, I pray I'm not distracting my neighbors. Please, Lord Jesus. So they don't get upset with me. Yeah, Allah, please, my God. Okay, let me show you. Okay, Psalm 148, verse 13. Psalm 148, verse 13. Let me show you. Psalm 138, 148, verse 13. Yes, exactly, Orthochristos. He's also serving as an example, but more than that. It's multifaceted. It's not just one meaning. Psalm 148, 13. Guys, explain this to me. Let them praise the name of the Lord, Jehovah, for his name alone is exalted. Do you guys agree? Jehovah's name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Is it only Jehovah's name that's exalted? Psalm 148, 13. Do you see it? I haven't blocked anyone, Michael, so calm down, friend. Unless you want to be the first one. Okay. Now, Psalm 113, verse 5. Psalm 113, verse 5. Psalm 113, verse 5. Amen, Talitha Kumi. Who is like Jehovah our God who dwells on high? What's the answer? This is a rhetorical qu uh, uh, question. Who is like the Lord our God who, who dwells on high, who reigns on high? What's the answer? Nobody, right? Right? So no one's like Jehovah dwells on high. Jehovah's name alone is exalted. And then Psalm 115, 16. Psalm 115, 16. Watch how this backfires against them. He'll get blocked with his mommy. Lewis, just be patient. Psalm 115, 16. Watch here, guys. 
The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. Heavens belong to him alone. But the earth he has given to the children of men. You don't get any clearer than that. The heavens belong only to him, whereas the earth he's given it to us. So notice, Jehovah's name alone is exalted. He alone dwells on high, and the heavens belong to him. But I'm confused. Hebrews 1.3, notice what it says about Jesus. Deanne Collins. How can it be God the Father if Jesus is included in the exaltation? That means Jehovah here has to refer to the Trinity, the Godhead. Okay, Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Yeah, I don't take beer because I don't drink beer. We're almost done, folks. I got to do a part five, God willing, tomorrow. What happened, Protestant? Dude, man, you're slower than molasses, bro. Hebrews 1, 3. Notice what it says about Jesus. Guys, pay attention. Notice what it says about Jesus. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Wait, 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 wait. Psalm 113.5 says, there's no one like Jehovah who sits on high. Jesus, the Son of God, sits with the Most High, the Father, on high. How can Jesus sit at the right hand of the Most High, meaning his Father, on high, if Jehovah alone sits on high? You better repent, Protestant, face the East. But hold on. Remember Psalm 148, 13 says, Jehovah's name alone is exalted. You remember that, right? Jehovah's name alone is exalted, right? Psalm 148, 13. You got that one? Because then I want you to explain Philippians 2, 9. Philippians 2, 9. No, Lewis. Lewis, can you help me to help you? Don't make things more than they are. Please don't do that because I want to make you stand all day. Please don't get into the nonsense of standing and sitting. Don't worry about that. Thank you, Nada. Philippians 2, 9. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Now, help me understand this. If Jehovah's name alone is exalted, and by name means here that he alone sits in throne and has supreme authority over everyone, why would the Father then exalt Jesus to possess the name, meaning the status, that is above everyone. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? If Jesus is a mere creature. Can you help me understand? Above all name means above all authority. Jesus shares... And God's supreme sovereignty over every authority in all existence. And yet this is something only true of Jehovah. But now let's look at Psalm 97 verse 9 and cross-reference it with Ephesians. Psalm 97 verse 9. And we'll be done with this session. Psalm 97 verse 9. And I'm going to show you how it backfires against the Quran. For you, Lord Jehovah, are most high above all the earth. You are above all the earth. Now notice the second part. You are exalted far above all gods. You are exalted far above all gods. Psalm 97, 9. Guys, pay attention in Jesus' name. Learn this. Learn this information. You are exalted far above all gods. Okay. Ephesians 1. Sorry, Protestants, a long one, but bear with me. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Bless the mods, especially Protestant, because I couldn't do this without them. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Watch here, folks. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power? Notice this, pay attention. Which he worked in Christ when he, God the Father, God the Father, raised him, from the dead, and seated him, Jesus, at his right hand in heavenly places. Now notice this language. This language should blow you away. And it reads the same way in the Jehovah's Witness Bible. Jesus is now 
far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name. He's far above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. And then 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Guys, please help me understand. I'm not as smart as David. I'm not as ugly as David either. Psalm 97, 9 says, Jehovah is far exalted above all gods. Jehovah's name alone is exalted. Jesus has been exalted by his father to sit on his right hand <clears throat> on high. And now Jesus is far above every name, every authority, every dominion in this age and the age to come. Everything is under his feet and he'll subject everything for the sake of his church to his church, which is his body and he's head over. How is Jesus sharing in what the Old Testament says is a status and authority and a position that belongs to Jehovah alone. And why is the Father giving Jesus that status if he's a mere creature? The answer, he's no mere creature. So this turns around and turns against the Unitarian and Muslim heretic. But now let's bury the Quran and bury Muhammad. Let's end it. Let's bury the Quran and bury Muhammad and end it. And Lord Jesus willing, I'll be on tomorrow. God willing, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless my lovely neighbor blasts the music for three hours. Okay? Then I have to wait. So look for me, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, God willing, tomorrow. Let's now bury the Quran. Chapter 17, verse 111. Chapter 17, verse 111. And say, praise be to Allah, who hath not taken unto himself a son, and who hath no partner in the sovereignty. So Allah has no partner in his dominion. Nor hath he, hath he any protecting friend through dependence, and magnify him with all magnificence. So the Quran says Allah has no partner, nor, no, nor son, no partner, nor does he have a son that shares in his dominion. Okay, chapter 25, verse 2. Chapter 25, verse 2. Chapter 25, verse 2. You guys got, and I'm not boasting, I'm boasting of the Holy Spirit. You got seminary level teaching and you got meat. And thank the triumph God all for free because he provides. 25, verse 2. Watch here, guys. Watch here. 25, verse 2. He unto whom belongeth the sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. He hath chosen no son, nor hath he any partner in the sovereignty. He hath created everything and hath meted out for it a measure. Guys, you understand what the Quran just said? The Quran is clear. Allah does not have anyone sharing in his kingdom over the heavens and the earth. He has no son sharing in his kingdom, dominion over the heavens and the earth. But wait, Mr. Muhammad. Jesus says he's the father's son whom the father exalted to share in his dominion over the heavens and the earth. Mr. Muhammad, the teachings of Daniel, the teachings of Isaiah, the teachings of Jesus and his followers prove that you are a liar, a son of Satan, and your God is Satan appearing as God to deceive you. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad, for showing us that the only way Jesus can share in the dominion of his father if he too is God and one with the father. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. You with me there? But now let's show you, let me show you how stupid Muhammad is. Guys, do you know that Muhammad in the Quran admits that Jesus is reigning with his God, with Allah over creation? Do you know that Muhammad admits that? Because he was so stupid that he heard Christians say certain things and he took that theology and made it part of the Quran in order to entice them to become Muslims. Do you want me to show you where Muhammad agrees with the Bible that Jesus rules with Muhammad's God over creation? You ready? So we can end it with a bang? You ready? Surprise, Muhammad. Chapter 3, verse 55. Chapter 3, verse 55. And we're done for tonight.
Chapter 3, verse 55. Watch here. Yalamaka, wanna kind of money on. Chapter 3, verse 55. Watch what Allah says. Poor, poor Protestant. Even first last who can post won't post. He did. See? You just rebuked me. Thank you. Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Did you catch it? Allah said to Jesus, I will raise you, Jesus, to myself. I will raise you to where I am. Did you catch that? The Quran has Allah saying to Jesus, Jesus, I'm gathering you and taking you to me, to myself, where I am. Chapter 4, verse 158. <whistles> Chapter 4, verse 158. And we're done, folks. Chapter 4, verse 158. We're done right here, David Karusi. We're done. But Allah took him. This is about Jesus. Allah took him unto himself. Allah was ever mighty wise. Okay, wait. Thank you, Bill. God bless you. Guys, guys, bless you. Be blessed in Jesus' name for the super chats. Lord, loosen my tongue so I don't stand. Did you catch it? 4158. 4158. Allah took Jesus to himself. So you ask the Muslims. Santillian, are you sponsored by uh, Purina Dakchow? Are you sponsored by dog food? Because you'd make a good dog doing commercials for them. 4158. Did you catch it? Allah took Jesus to himself. Now, ask them, ask the Muslim, where is Allah? A Salafi will tell you, Allah is above the seven heavens, above the throne. So he's above creation, right? They'll say, yeah. Thank you for proving Jesus is above all creation. Why? Why? Because the Quran says Allah took Jesus to where Allah is. Oh, Jesus, I'm taking you to myself. Allah took Jesus to himself. You just said Allah is above all creation. That means for 2,000 years, Jesus is with your God above all creation, something Allah said he would not do for any creature. So either Jesus is one with your Allah or Allah committed shirk. Say Christian, the guy's being a brain ass. He's trying to make fun. Because Nike is supposedly a Greek pagan god. Are you being sponsored? No, but you're being sponsored by Purina, Purina Dog Chow because you're a barking dog. Bow, wow. Woo -hoo. All right. So even the Quran admits Muhammad is a son of Satan in hell under the feet of Jesus. Lord willing, tomorrow we got to do part five. Tomorrow, part five, God willing, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Pray for me. Covenant with me. Pray for my daughters and I, fast, and ask Jesus to miraculously protect me because I need favor here. I'm still not out of the waters. Pray God gives me favors, favor with the locals here. They'll work with me, and I stay here permanently, and Jesus brings my daughters to me. Please, folks, if Satan has his way, he'll stop me from doing ministry and lock me up. Pray against him. Pray for favor that I can continue to be free to serve Jesus and do ministry for the glory of Christ and travel for the glory of Christ. Pray that my daughters come to me because they've been missing me and asking for me. And only God can miraculously bring them there, bring them here to me. Pray for our health, our holiness, our purity, for favor. The Lord deal with the corrupt, wicked, evil, satanic legal system. Use of the devil to destroy the people of God. Pray the Lord will continue to support the ministry. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah Almighty in the flesh the Son of the Father, the e eternal companion of the Spirit, and the one God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We love you. We worship you. Preserve us for your glory to never deny you or betray you or walk away, but to die in union with you until Jesus returns. Maranatha. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And the Lord loves you. The good thing about this, the good thing about this session, don't convert to Islam. Expose themselves. If you guys weren't here from the beginning, listen to the beginning. Don't convert to Islam. Expose himself as an anti-Trinitarian who hates the Trinity and hates the servants of the Trinity, who's going around slandering me because he is a dog of the devil who can't refute me and defend his false god, so he goes the route of slander. Do not support him. He hates the Trinity. And if you support him, shame on you and warn people to stop supporting him.
just because he bashes Islam. He not only bashes Islam, he hates the Trinity. He is worse than a Muslim because he's a sheep in wolf's clothing pretending to be a Christian. May the Lord rebuke him and cause him to repent or deal with him accordingly in Jesus' name. Be zealous for the Trinity. Love the Trinity more than you hate Islam. And be zealous for the Trinity because the triune God lives. And because he lives, we live also in Jesus' name. Take care.